Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Pro Noob RC. I'm Keith. What's up, Jesse? Tonight we are having our first ever Christmas special. Uh, we're a second year in, just wrapping it up. This video will conclude two years of filming and putting videos out for your and our entertainment. Uh, it's been a fun two years. Uh, we started this project uh, just to kind of drive ourselves to have a bit more fun with the hobby. The hobby was fun, but uh, it's kind of what we do all the time. So it's kind of a little bit more interest for us to kind of do it this way and get some builds out to you guys and kind of build a fan base that way. And, you know, we can start giving stuff away and all that kind of fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, so we're doing our Christmas special tonight and we're going to be talking about some upcoming builds we're doing, which we have here, and uh, some builds that we have done in the past. But first off, we will talk about this wonderful pile of uh, gifts we have here. Um, Santa was good to us. So uh, first up we have the Kyosho Mini Z 4x4 Jeep Wrangler. That's a 128 scale, 127 scale, something like that. Don't hold me to it, it's on the box somewhere. Uh, very, very high detailed rig. That's actually gonna be a very, uh, one of the builds we do uh, beginning of the year. Uh, probably your next video up will be on that one. Uh, just a quick little video. We got all the brass upgrades, carbon fiber frame rails, beautiful. Uh, we picked this up from our friends at Eliminator RC in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, they have an online store. Uh, they've been very fantastic with this COVID-19 stuff that's going on. Uh, they're, uh, it's just yeah, a mess, right? So, um, unfortunately we lost our favorite place to hang out, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, and then we have, uh, I'm sure everybody's seen these, the uh, Axial B17 actually released this to celebrate 15 years of business. Uh, Axial started back in 2005 making nitro motors and then they went over to making like beadlock wheels for monster trucks and I think they might even made some tires and stuff like that and uh, then one day they decided they were going to switch to RC rock crawlers and that's kind of when we got on board. Uh, we have used Axial products since day one. We used to race our uh, nitro monster trucks with the big old Axial RR32s in them. Uh, so for us, this was an important piece to get to have to the collection. We're going to keep one of the trucks. We have two, one here, one up there. Uh, one of the trucks is number 6581 or 6788 or something. 6501 and 6788, I think. Yeah, 6788 and 6501 on these two trucks. So we're going to keep 6501 here sealed up in the box because he's a lower number. Uh, I don't really care. The number to me doesn't even mean anything, but obviously somebody down the road might mean something to them. So uh, we're going to keep this guy sealed up for nostalgic reasons. Um, it is the it is a replica of the first um, uh, 1.9 scale truck that Axial produced. Uh, it was not a, this was the AX10 underneath. It wasn't the uh, seat channel frame on that one yet. It was just the AX10. Uh, but we did have. That is our first crawler, so that's why we wanted to get those. Uh, next up, we'll talk about the uh, SMT-10. Uh, we also picked up this at Eliminator. Also, the, these came from Eliminator. Oh, mostly everything comes from Eliminator for us. They're local, fantastic service. So, uh, The SMT-10, that is the Scale Builder Monster Truck from Horizon Hobby or Axial. Um, what is that? Um, the Raw Builders Kit version. And we picked up a whole bunch of Vanquish parts. We're going to do a really nice uh, Blue Thunder monster truck build with that one coming up. And of course we grabbed another Yeti Junior. You can never have enough of those. We've probably got about five of them now. They're just so cheap and so much fun. You can give them away for gifts. You can give them to kids when they come over and play with them. They're just so tough. And uh, the little yellow Jeep up top over there, another JLU. That would be like number nine or ten for us around here. Uh, we actually won that one off a draw. Uh, there's a lot of places on Facebook doing um sticker draw uh, sticker sale draws or whatever you buy in you get a sticker they do a draw and you win something right so uh if you can find groups like that in your local area which is nicer because you get a chip quicker to you or go pick it up uh get on that for sure um that costs 20 bucks to win um the shakira d5 we got a pair of them one for jesse one for me jesse me jesse me whatever <laughs> Uh, basically, we got those off of RC Mart for like their Black Friday special for like 80 bucks a pop. They're uh, rear wheel drive drift cars. And Jesse um, ended up buying a RX7 and a 
Toyota AE86, the new style one, um, with the Rocket Buddy kit bodies. Those are coming out from Drift NL out of the Netherlands. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, this awesome piece here actually is one thing we want to say thanks to our fans, thanks to our supporters. Uh, this was made by Jared Ardent. Um, hope I'm saying that right, Jared. Uh, you'll find him in a lot of the comments. Uh, huge supporter. Um, he shares our videos a lot. He um, comments and interacts. Yeah, so without uh, people that support us like Jared and all our other supporters and everybody that's watching the channel right now, thank you guys very much. Um, we're just going to keep on going. Uh, we're sitting right now at uh, almost 3,000 subs and uh, you know we never thought we would get past the thousand mark which is a feat on its own never mind getting the watch minutes up our watch minutes are crazy 90% uh, of the people 96% of the people watch our videos aren't subscribing but our watch minutes are still there which helps um, you know once again we're not doing this for money uh, none of the stuff you see on the table um, at this point YouTube couldn't afford to pay for any of it <laughs> Uh, the small amount of money that we see from the ad sharing at this point is uh, You could buy maybe Freddy sitting up there after about a year. So Yeah, so uh, it's been a lot of fun uh, People think that we're doing this for gain and we get a lot of comments people are like oh, I bet you didn't pay for it um, I'm self-employed. I work very hard a lot of hours, and this is my really only outlet So uh, I like to go hard on this uh, We do have long winters here. So <laughs> this is the way we go next in the Christmas special, we're going to talk about and showcase some of the builds we've done um, off camera. Ones that we've, you know, maybe started, like our Axial Fest build, which we started, then Axial Fest uh, didn't pan out because of the COVID. So we'll throw those ones up and show you because they, they did get finished, but uh, there's no point in filming for Axial Fest when we can't go, right? So, uh, yeah, so stay tuned. We're going to clear off this deck here and turn on some more lights and uh, start showcasing some of these awesome builds that Jesse and I have bumped out in the last uh, two years. Okay, the first two trucks that uh, we're going to talk about are some trucks that Jesse and I built last winter, um, right after Christmas time, and I don't think we filmed anything on them. Um, yeah, pretty sure we didn't actually. So uh, we're big fans of Arctic trucks. So yeah, we got some video that actually this one driving, that is right, but none of the build stuff on it. So, uh, so anyway, we're, we're big fans of the guys over at Arctic trucks. Uh, one day we are going to do a build with the big fat tires and stuff like that, but it's kind of hard to find the right ratio to rim and tire size. So we threw together these little trucks, something fun. Uh, this guy here is Iceland. This guy's Iceland. You can see the uh, outline on the door and we've got the Arctic trucks on there. Uh, their logo, Explore with no limits. And we also have it done on the hood. Uh, the chassis underneath on this one is the ECX Barrage uh, Doomsday, which was their little mini monster truck kind of hot rod thing with these blower and stacks and all that. Um, really nice wide little axles, fat little tires, super light truck, so it goes good in the snow. The thing gets on top of the hard pack snow and just cruises along nicely. And the body we used on that is the Proline Sumo body, and it fits it just beautifully. Nice little setup on it. Uh, truck's a lot of fun in the snow. A um, little light, so as long as the snow's got a good hard pack to it, it, it goes pretty good. So That guy's very basic. This guy here is our TRX4 Sport, um, but it started its life as a uh, builder's kit. It has a two-speed transmission, it has the locking diffs in it, and a two-speed transmission. Um, obviously you can see it, it's got the Traxxas tracks on it with the aggressive um, treads on it. It does have full light kit everywhere. We've got the light kits in the wheel well. It's got the LEDs on the front, it's got the LED light bar on the front, it's got the light bar on the top, and it's got the scene lights on the bed along with the tail lights on the back. And we modded our two front um, lights because these inner fenders were actually cut down from, uh, they won't fit with the sport, they're a little bit different. So we cut them to fit and we moved the light from behind this light so it points out the side to so actually get a nice wide light in the front end. Um, Super fun truck, um, yeah, it was fun to do, fun to detail, we even did a little orange and blue shovel in there, some scale rust and stuff on it to kind of make it uh, stand out. Um, it's not much to show you under the body, it's just a basic Traxxas T-Rex 4, two speed with locking diffs, uh, builder kit there, so. Uh, fun truck in the snow, these tracks, 
uh, we're not happy with them. Uh, the stock tracks don't skip. These tracks skip, they're too soft of a rubber. It just might be where we live, it's too cold or whatnot like that, but they pack. They don't pack with snow, uh, they just skip under load. Uh, we put the truck outside before we run it for 20 minutes, half an hour, let everything freeze and then throw a battery in it and start running it and uh, still packs up. They don't, packs with snow, sorry, they skip, sorry, whenever you load up with uh, like climbing up a snow drift or something. So uh, we're hoping tracks just changes the compound. That's too soft for the track, so yeah. So yeah, shout out to Arctic Trucks. Um, we're big fans. We follow them on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, one day we will get ourselves a proper build with a tier at four of an Arctic truck with the real big ass Russian snow tires. So we're gonna put these guys back on the rack and grab a couple more. So uh, this mean little goat here is uh, what we call a Jeepute or Jeep Ute. We call it Jeepute around here though, because uh, it's a Jeep and a ute put together. I don't know, we're just being fun. But uh, yeah, we built this truck oh, probably four years ago. Um, it's basically an SCX-10. Um, there was a comp coming up and we haven't had a comp here in a while. I got off work on a Friday. I went and bought a brand new SCX-10 and everything to build this minus the body. And uh, went out, did pretty good in the comp, and then finished it up after that. So the truck pretty much got everything you'd throw into it. It's got under overdrive in the front, underdrive in the rear. It's got Curry F9 uh, non-portal axles, front and rear, the big old, big old pumpkin style ones, Gen 1 styles. Very nice looking though, underneath. It's got the 3 16 um, stainless steel rods, MIP dry shafts. Uh, it's got a nice, I don't know if you can see inside, um, red aluminum. Uh, Vancouver transmission with a black gear cover, uh, Robertson Racing Spur gear, Robertson Racing Pinion, Tekin 35 turn hand wound motor, the Tekin ESC, uh, Vanquish Hertz Dig with a really strong high tech servo, a side high tech 775 metal gear. I don't know how strong it is, but works good. Uh, yeah, sitting on Vanquish rims with the um, I don't know what they call the bead lock rings. The big ones. <laughs> uh, front bumper on the front is custom build. Uh, we actually bought a bumper that looked like this, but the winch sat in front of our light bar. Our light bar is just that little dude mounted into the grill in the front. And the headlights on this guy are your uh, Vanquish uh, rigid Q LEDs or whatever they're called, something like that. Super bright, this thing has some mean firepower on the front for seeing at night, a lot of fun. Uh, the body was a four-door Jeep, um, new bright JK, four-door, long, big, big boy. So we cut the back off, brought the back all the way in. Actually, the most time I spent on this truck was recreating the shapes of the cab to run all the way through down the bottom. A lot of guys just do this cap it off, uh, or they make it round. I wanted to have all the same angles, so it just, it looked like it was done that way at the factory. And then on this side, we used a Tamiya um, Night Hauler or something like that. Uh, I upgraded the exhaust on one of my semi uh, models, so we actually had a stack kicking around. This is sitting on a piece of rubber on the inside so it can take a tumble and not snap off. The whole thing is, uh, it's got some play to it, which is fine. It gets bashed on the rocks and stuff, and you can pop off, put it back together, just for looks. Uh, in the back, we did a nice little radiator. We some lines to it. We got the uh, Proline fuel cell in the back. We had the Proline double fuel filter dealy here, but uh, that's come off just too many tumbles. There's been some damage. It had a tailgate piece on the back. It had a little bottom trim with uh, tail lights, and it had a gap piece that filled the back window, but uh, we've taken it to comps, and it's done very well. Uh, the tires on this rig are my favorite for where we live, are your Pitbull Growler 1.9s. Uh, when these tires first came out, I seen them at the shelf, and I was like, those tires look ugly, they suck, I'll never buy them. And then when you get to the point when you have no more tires to buy at the hobby shop, you're like, okay, well, let me try those. Take them home, I threw them on, and now pretty much majority of my trucks that I wheel are uh, rocking these tires. They're, they're just amazing, so. Uh, the fenders on it are off of a um, Jeep, Axial Jeep uh, JK on the front. We just raised them up, cut off the factory, and screwed them on at the hood line. Same as the front uh, foot clips there, so. 
yeah, otherwise, uh, fantastic truck. Um, we don't use, um, we haven't built many trucks with, um, uh, custom frames. We haven't got into that yet with the angled skid plates and stuff like that. I kind of like to keep our trucks built off of something that we would build. So, you know, straight, just the regular C channel chassis and then build up from there. So, uh, yeah, the only thing real custom that we built on this, it's kind of hard to show you. The body is not easy to take off. There's a lot of bolts to get it off, but, uh, we built a custom bracket that sits up above the front that holds all the electronic tray on it with the battery tray right in the back which can still tuck the servo up in there, so. Yeah, fun little truck. Um, you guys will start seeing some videos of this guy out this summer. We actually get some time and COVID is off and we can get out to do some crawling. Uh, so this Jeep here, we don't got one of them cute fancy little names for it. It's just the blue blurple Jeep, that guy. Uh, he started life as one of these uh, two-door China Jeeps with the weird flat kind of slanted neanderthal looking jeep it wasn't part of their evolution kind of skipped out cousin brother line there i don't know uh this guy and this guy are the exact same um this build i didn't really care for it it came from a guy in alberta um well not all of it there's a bit of backstory it came from a guy in alberta uh one of my buddies ended up buying it he kind of got scammed on it it showed up, all the links were made out of threaded rod, uh, complete garbage. Uh, it was a much shorter wheelbase. Um, I can go on and on, it was just garbage. I feel bad for the kid, uh, and I had another SEX 10 kicking around. I made a deal with him that I would swap over my axles and da da da. The truck did come with the curry axles on it, but it had those weird kind of grayish blue ones. So they're a little bit of a weird silver. Yeah, there was silver, not the clear, that's what it was. There was silver, not the clear, which I wanted to keep my clears. So we made a deal, swapped axles, swapped all the parts, da 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 He got a truck he liked out of it, and then I got this truck to start. It was gray and uh, green. Gray and uh, fluorescent green. Uh, first off, we stretched a wheelbase on it out to 12.2. Um, 12 it's just under the 12.3, which everybody likes to be at. She's riding 12.2, works perfectly. Yeah. We did all the body mods that came with the full fender still on it, uh, on the front, and nothing on the back. So the front, we uh, took the fender, marked it with tape in the pattern you see now, and just cut that all away. On the front, we cut away the turn signals underneath the eyes, and we put a CRC front bumper from an axle kit on there, and it kind of looks just really nice. Kind of gives it like a big chin for that slanted, slopey face it has on it, which is definitely not look like a Jeep. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we wanted to keep the full interior. As one thing about the truck is it did come with a forward mount motor from uh, Generis Custom Machine, GCM in Canada. Um, I to show you guys, not myself. But <laughs> uh, so it did come with the full interior that wasn't chopped up too bad. Um, it did have doors on it, and I wanted to get the Knight Custom tube doors. We got the Knight Customs tube doors from uh, Shapeways, and uh, popped those all onto it, kind of finished the look. And then the interior before was just all one color of gray. So I left the seats gray, and the dash gray, and everything else inside we uh, detailed and painted. It made it look all pretty, all fancy. Threw a nice uh, rigid uh, Vanquish light bar on the front. We swapped the wheels out, it had some billets on it. We went to the uh, super wide offset uh, deep dish 1.9s. Um, we cut the rear body to the back so we could move the drive line to the back, uh, farther backwards, taper this all in so everything clears on the back. Everything clears nicely. There, we click back in. So that's, uh, yeah. And the rear before had normal suspension, but since we lengthened the truck so much, we could no longer use that. So what we ended up doing was reversing the shock tower. Actually, no, I used shock towers from an SCX-10 II, and I moved them forward on the frame to a new set of holes. And I used trailing links on the bottom from a Viterra uh, to give me a trailing arm rear axle. So now my shock sits here. And they're short little guys, they're just short little shocks, they're limited. But because it's a trailing arm truck, it gets like really good flex, front and rear, especially in the rear. It's a boatload of flex out back, so. 
Um, and with the um, the trailing arms, the trucks actually become one of our favorites to wheel because you hit a rock with the trailing arm here and it just picks up the back tire and feeds it underneath the tire, right? So this guy actually turned out to be a lot of fun when we were done with it. Um, so yeah, he's got the Casey Curry Rock Jock uh, Vanquish made axles on the front and rear, uh, beautiful pieces. The servo in here is a 7955 titanium high-tech servo. Um, no name motor. I peel the stickers off the motor sometimes just to mess with myself and obviously it's working this time. So It's got the uh, old Icon uh, uh, axle shocks on there. Those are kind of cool. You don't see those too often anymore. And uh, basically I yeah, just axle links in the front. I uh, got a Vanquish link in the front here. Very hard to see, but we had to do a nice curve up on there so it fit underneath everything. It's been a long time tuning it. Uh, we built these little trays on the bottom that come up into the wheel well. Uh, one side has the, well you can see, receiver mounted, and the other side has the ESC mounted. Um, battery space on this truck is at an absolute premium. It runs a very small, um, high C little, I think it's like a thousand or something, a thousand milliamp. Uh, tiny battery. This thing's filthy. So yeah, this is uh, one of the many, many builds we've done. Uh, we did attach all of these body panels with the uh, locked up RC scale hardware. Uh, we got little tiny tail lights that we added to the corners here and here. Pop that lens out last time we're at wheeling. I'm gonna put a new one in. Little axle there, yeah. Uh, get headlights running in the front, and we did just a zip tie grill. A couple zip ties strapped together and jabbed in there because it was, they had their own grill in there, but it was spaced back and it looked funny, so we did our own. So, um, yeah, four link in the rear, three link pound art in the front. Um, no bump steer. Everything set up the way you'd want it. Okay, so that's bringing us towards the uh, end of our small little short sweet little talk about some of our junk and stuff like that for our second year Christmas special. Uh, or wait, our first Christmas second year special, you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, growing up, every kid has a dream. When I was young, uh, this truck was the one I wanted really bad. Um, I first got my hands on, I think, the original Stadium Blitzer I, when I was 12. Something like that. I don't. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I traded a motorcycle to a kid to get one of these things off him. I wanted it so bad. I had a bunch of motorcycles, and I uh, wanted to get into RC because it was less painful. And uh, yeah, this little dude came along. It's not holding up well. I noticed all the stickers are peeling off. So he's gonna try to find another deco sheet for him. But uh, this guy is not the original that I got back then. Uh, this is a repop that they did. Um, I think they did this in like 2000 or something like that. They, they did a repop of the original 1992, I think, when this one came out. So uh, I picked this one up and I was able to get all the same electronics and radio and everything that I had for it back then, just to remind myself of, you know, the very first RC that I had. So it's not the first, but it is an exact replica of my first. Um, the one I wanted for Christmas, yada yada yada. My parents could never figure it out. They always ended up getting me Tycos and all those other ones, which is cool. I had fun, modeled them. Dad taking to go get big old drill motors from Princess Auto and put drill motors and a whole bunch of batteries on it, see how far we could drive it. And uh, you know, it progresses into this one day, right? So, okay, so Merry Christmas from Jesse and Keith at Pro Noob RC. We want to thank everybody that's clicked the subscribe button, everybody that's been here since day one, all our subscribers. We want to thank Jared for our awesome Christmas gift. Thank you, sir. Love that. We're going to keep that all over the place in here. we got to find a home and hang that up somewhere soon. And uh, yeah, everybody, hopefully everybody has a Merry Christmas. Everybody gets the gifts they want. Everybody, uh, hopefully we can get out and maybe see some family. I know uh, a lot of places are going through lockdown, so... Uh, yeah, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, stay tuned. Lots of builds coming up. Um, click that subscribe button. Um, it helps uh, support us. We get a small bit of scratch that uh, just helps basically motivate us really. It's not really paying for any of it, but it's just something to you know, show us people care, right? So, 
Um, yeah, hopefully maybe you get your gift that you always wanted to this Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.